using stable conditions and with well characterized conditions. So this is a mechanism indeed. All, many people believe that nanoparticle or nanomaterial is like this. And many people believe this entity cell, but it is not correct. Whoa. Nanoparticles are aggregate. And in the medium, for example, cellular medium, nanoparticle aggregate and absorb the component of medium. And sometimes nanoparticles are dissolved because of big surfaces. So solubility speed is very high. So that is a difference from fine particles. And these aggregated nanoparticles are incorporated into the cell by endocytosis, just by cell, because the cell want to eat these um, very good food for cells. So these nanoparticles enter into the cell and some nanomaterials are dissolved and sometimes they have the toxicity. That's the other story of nanomaterial. So many, many people believe that nanomaterial or nanoparticles are stable in medium or in blood. So that is a dream, uh, just a mistake. And there are so many drug delivery systems, but they didn't characterize the uh, um, state of nanoparticle in blood and in medium. So this is just a dream, not real science. And anyway, we characterize nanomaterials and we found some nanomaterial uh, that dissolve in working solution. Working solution is a medium. And some nanomaterial, some, some nanomaterials absorb component because of um, surface area is very high compared to weight. So many components uh, absorbed by nanomaterials and some nanomaterial aggregate or agglomerate in working sol solutions. So dissolving, absorbing, and the stability have to evaluate it. So we need evaluation method. First, some materials are dissolved. These are nanomaterial dissolved in medium. So color will be changed because of dissolved. So if you, someone says this is a dangerous nanomaterial, this is because of metal ions, not nanomaterial. And these nanomaterials are um, typically absorb cellular component, uh, medium component, and color, sometimes color will be changed. This is a nanomaterial. These nanomaterials are not dissolved, but absorb many components. And almost all nanomaterials uh, aggregate and agglomerate in working solutions. So this is suspended, but aggregate during the cytotoxicity testing. Also, I developed how to suspend the nanomaterial. This is a method for stable, for making stable suspensions. We use centrifugation and we, if you see, carefully, this is very different or unique method. We use slower, I know, higher centrifuge, from higher centrifuge to 
do a centrifuge, and we don't use zupaneta, we use precipitation. And after taking precipitation, we suspend again in the median. By this procedure, many medium components are absorbed by nanomaterial, uh, nanoobject, and saturated. So, for example, this, after these conditions, no more adsorptions. And we can see the uh, particle size by dynamic light scattering. And ST01 is um, indeed past, uh, primary particle size is from five to seven nanometer, but it seems 100 nanometer. And this is depend on the centrifugation speed. So anyway, we can get stable, but big nanoparticle, aggregated nanoparticle. Under this condition, ah, we can check stability by dynamic light to scatter. I'm sorry, this is Japanese. This explain this is carried out by Dr. Kato in AIST. And this is a stability of nanoparticle. You see, this is not stable, but we can measure cell toxicity test during this one day. So in this case, no problem. But anyway, we have to care. And particle aggregate incorporated. So we have the publications and reviewed, and I try to make ISO. ISO is a international organization for standardization. And this is a non-government international uh, organization. And we have the three kind of um, publications. One is TL, technical report, no binding as a standard. And TS is technical specification, binding as a standard. And this, uh, this is a final purpose of ISO. I think student knows ISO. So before becoming ISO, generally we make technical specifications. I try to make technical specifications. So this is outline of technical specification. Title is this, characteristics of working suspensions of nano object for in vitro assay to evaluate inherent this is important, nano object to kiss. Scope. This technical specification describes method to evaluate the validity of working suspension containing nanomaterial samples used for in vitro toxic asset test. And content we have scope or some method. And this is the content of the working solution for in vitro testing. We have to see dissolved material, adsorbed component, we have to check stability of working solutions, and we need reporting how this has the toxicity. And we have appendix to give more information about um, character of nanomaterial. So this is this. So like this, so this shows this long attainment uh, method of how we have to measure. And component, how to measure. Mainly we focus on proteins and calcium because protein, once protein is reduced, cell become uh, meat starvation and cell will be die. And calcium, calcium, once calcium is incorporated in cell, they have the, some um, damage to signal transductions. And stability, this is very important. You have to uh, 
see stability by DLS, LD, static light scattering. And you have to measure the content or concentrations. So once, if you, your suspension is like this, this is not good. You cannot say this has a toxicity only. And reporting is like this. And after that, you may now evaluate nanomaterial with confidence. And after four year discussion, I published I saw TS19337 on 2016. And this is a publication. And after that, after three years, so in 2019, uh, we decided to improve as ISO. 19337 and we improved for three years about three years anyway this project was started just before starting coronavirus and during coronavirus we discussed with the meeting it was very hard for me because many people speak english and anyway we have some um, voting, and now I am in this state. Yes, this is the final uh, voting until next month. So please, Indonesian ISO say approve. And this was very interesting uh, suggestion. Russian Federation approved with comment. This was the first time for me. Russia never give me any comment. Last this time Russia give me. So probably Russian scientists have some um, feeling alone because of the Russia government did. And USA also says a problem is common. And this is a new ISO under voting. So anyway, once uh, if you want to evaluate non-object toxicity, you have to measure or you have to confirm stability or or working suspensions. And you may do during that period in vitro assay result. And toxicity, if you can see the toxicity, you have to measure concentration of metal ions or concentration of culture medium component. And you have to check contamination. You have chat? Okay. Oh, okay. Anyway, this is become now essential. You have to num see number and size and stability. But there's no toxicity. You don't have to check solubility or something other. This is the content of ISO. Mm -hmm. Just a moment. Okay. So anyway, I already explained. So I will show you some result. This is a titanium dioxide nanoparticles incorporated into cells. So you see primary particle size seven nanometer and primary particle size two hundred nanometer. This is a fine particle. This is a nanoparticle. Both of particles are incorporated into cells. Of course, size is different, but anyway, same thing, same result. So, as I checked by electron microscope, we can say nanoparticles are incorporated 
into the cell by endocytosis. And this is a nickel oxide. This, I'll show you the some example of result. This is a ultra fine particle of nickel oxide and fine particle, same things with titanium. This is incorporated into the cell. And black, we have the two types of nickel oxide. And black oxide, fine particle, ah, black nickel oxide fine particle was said more dangerous than green fine nanoparticle because of crystal, crystal, crystal structure was different. And senior scientists told me, you have to care black nanoparticle because of crystal structure is different from green nickel oxide. And we evaluate toxicities using MTT assay. MTT assay is using some um, chemical and we can check from uh, the absorbance of hormazan. This is reduced by mito uh, in mitochondria or in cells. And in that case, we can say this is still alive. Anyway, result was like that. Fine black is not so dangerous to nano black, but fine green is uh, also not dangerous, but nano green was very dangerous. In the case of fine, black is more dangerous, but in the case of nano, green is more dangerous. So nano green, nano black, fine black, green, fine green. So this is completely different. And this is a chromogenic assay. Chronogenic assays using the, like this, you check colony homing unit, counting colon after treatment. The result of this. With this also, oh, sorry. We same with MTT assays and green nano was uh, dangerous. And we check the solubility of nickel oxide particle by checking uh, nickel ions. And we found nano, uh, nano green, where is nano green? Ah, yeah, nano green is the uh, most soluble. And next is nano, nano black and fine black and fine green. So. Solubility is the reason of toxicity, not crystal structure. So many people say that fine black was dangerous because of crystal. This is not correct. That is just solubility of ions, ions. So we, with this experiment, we found that solubility is very important. So, Anyway, uh, we check the solubility, uh, uh, viability of cells. That means toxicity of cells. So material that shows solubility or, or solubilized nanomaterial has a toxic, even in fine particles. Of course, nanoparticles, there is toxicity. This is a case of zinc. This is a case of nickel oxide. But titanium or cerium oxide is not stay, uh, soluble. Then there is not so big toxicity. So this is a mechanism I already showed with pictures. Formation and second, secondary 
particles and uptake of secondary particles into cells. And some particle is dissolved and increased into a cellular loss level due to ion elution. And induction apoptosis of cell death. So if this is not dissolved, there's not so big toxicity. Okay. So this is uh, another aspect of the truth of nano object. Uh, before that, anyway, this is summary. Don't forget, this is applied for many nano medicines. Many me nano medicine scientists say nanoparticle is effective, but that is not true. They didn't check aggregation in the blood, in blood or in medium. So another aspect of truth of nano object, titanium dioxide, TiO2, anatase, and the UV irradiation. It is said TiO2 produce loss reactive oxygen, oxygen species. And this kill microbes, it is said. But we found TiO2 protect yeast cell during fermentation under UV radiation. Okay. TiO2 anatase. We have the ruchil. This is a ruchil, and this is anatase, 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 anatase. Anatase, more, it is said anatase is more dangerous, and ruchil is not dangerous. So for your faces, for sunscreen, we use this. And anyway, we use anatase, dangerous UV uh, TiO2. And once UV is irradiated TiO2, they release electron. And electrons, if there is oxygen, they bound to oxygen, and this becomes superoxide anion. And here we have no electron, so this has the hole. So from uh, hydroxy ions, they take electrons, and as a result, titanium oxide produce hydroxy radical. This is very oxidative product. Oxidant. So please check. This is a reactive oxygen species. This is oxygen. Sorry, this is in Japanese. <laughs> this is a singlet oxygen. This is the hydrogen dioxide and superoxide anion and hydroxy radical. So titanium dioxide produce superoxide anion and hydroxy radical. So we checked. TiO2 nanoparticle under UV radiation break down methylene blue. Okay. Only UV, they cannot break methylene blue, but presence of TiO2, they break methylene blue. That means uh, um, TiO2 produce ROS, loss of reactive oxygen species and the uh, UV irradiations. And next step, we exposed yeast cell to ultra ultraviolet UVs presence under presence of titanium oxide. And we analyzed, um, for example, you can culture yeast cell like this. So we have four fractions. Under UV, oh sorry, Japanese. Then we have the absorbed fraction. This is like this. And floating fraction, maybe like this. And without UV, and without UV 
we also have floating fraction and adsorbed fraction. So we checked responses and we found that yeast performs oxidative stress defense response under UV radiation with or without TIOT. So yeast cell response only UV, not titanium dioxide. So probably yeast cell did not respond to reactor, reactive oxygen species from TiO2 under UV irradiation. So only UV induced oxidative stresses. Many people, many scientists say loss uh, kill yeast cells or inhibit yeast growth, but we, we didn't see. Next is surprising. This is the yeast cell growing on the plate. Under UV conditions, yeast cell cannot grow at all because of UV. But if you spread titanium dioxide, you can see yeast cells are growing, but we can take made colonies. Of course, only TiO2 powder, no microbes are grown because we already sterilized these before spreading these particles. Anyway, this shows titanium dioxide nanoparticles protect yeast cells from UV radiation. Why? I cannot believe because this is com completely different result with other scientists. We monitored yeast growth using uh, microscope. So this is TiO2, okay? And you can see yeast cells and some yeast are aggregated like this. And one day later, yeast cell become bigger. And around here, probably this growing. So near to titanium dioxide, yeast can grow and like this, and probably this make colonies. So I thought TiO2 produce some antioxidant product, but I don't know what. I think during Uranus and stay, you have no answer. You know this? With a TiO2 sensei? Hi. You know, you knew this. Oh, which one? With a, a yes. second day? Or this is a TiO2 effect to uh, yeast grow. But yes. I don't know uh, what will happen with that. Reason you don't know. Mm. Okay. Yes. I will explain why. Indeed, I need five years to understand. Oh, so as I told you, titanium dioxide under UV, they produce electrons, okay? This is indeed reductive, not oxidative. And this is oxidative. Okay, so we have to understand reduction and oxidation occurs together. And we check superoxide anion under UV radiation. And ah, using DHT as indicator, this is widely accepted as indicator of superoxide anion, and we measured superoxide anion, and we used scavenger for superoxide dismutase. We can say this is the amount of superoxide anion produced. And next is the 
measurement of hydrochloridical and UV radiations. And we use ethanol as a eliminator or a scavenger. And I also put glucose because ethanol and glucose is similar structure. And this is a hydrochloridical. And glucose degrees to hydrochloridical production. So that means glucose scavenges hydrochloridical. Okay. So that means uh, uh, glucose in medium degrees hydrochloridical. But on the other hand, they cannot decrease superoxide anion or electrons. So, for example, cytochrome C, cytochrome C is reduced by superoxide anions. We check reduction of cytochrome C and the presence of glucose and without glucose. So, under presence of glucose, there is more reduction to cytochrome C. That means high time dioxide in the medium produced reductive environment. And we measured uh, redox potential in the presence of glucose under UV. So this is more reduced. And this is a condition uh, that anaerobic microbe can grow. So this is oxidation, hydroxyradical so oxidation contribute to oxidation, but spikes anion or electron contribute to deduction. So this is the response of UV radiation. So UV radiation causes oxidative stress, but titanium dioxide supply I, uh, electrons and the reductive environment. So, in the culture, TIOs produce electrons and hydroxyradical, but this hydroxyradical is scavenged by glucose. And electron becomes the dominant. That means they have the reductive environment. So this is the reason why yeast cell made colonies around titanium dioxide. And I showed you methylene blue was broken, but indeed the methylene blue bro was bro broken down due to reduction, not oxidation indeed. Next will be complex and uh, I will not talk as time is coming, okay? That's all, thank you. Thank you very much, Sensei. Uh, okay, for uh, after this, after your presentation, we have a question and answer yeah, section. Yeah, yeah. For a student, uh, if you have a question, you can raise uh, your hand with uh, raise hand tools, and or, or you can chat with this room, or you can ask me by WhatsApp. Uh, you can uh, ask uh, in Indonesia or English. Uh, if you write in Indonesia, you ask in Indonesia. I will help to translate with you. Yes, Sensei. Do you understand? Yes, a little bit. A, a little bit. Just a um, little bit. <laughs> uh, Dr. Yolani, can I uh, ask a question? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, my name is Pebri Doni. Uh, thank you very much, Professor, for your uh interesting talk that I really learned a lot from your talk. There are so many insights that you are uh, really presenting. Thank you. So I just wondering that is there any possibility that we use uh, titanium dioxide yeah, 
to yeah. protect uh, this nanoparticle to protect plants from um, radiation, uh, UV radiation, as you mentioned that uh, you use uh, 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 titanium dioxide uh, nanoparticle to protect the yeast from the UV radiations. I just wondering that is there any possibility that we use this nanoparticle, for example, to protect the plants from the uh, UV radiation, because right now uh, the climate change, you know, is there any way that we can protect the plants using the the same nanoparticle that you're using uh, with the with the uh, yes? Yeah, but uh, once you protect the UV, plant cannot produce carbon. Uh, cannot make body. Mm -hmm. So okay. probably we don't need or well, of course we can protect UV mm -hmm. but it's look just like, to, like one paper is enough to protect UV from plant. Mm. Like this is okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, understood. Yeah. We don't need yes. I also want to ask you about the ROS, the re re reactive oxygen species that you uh, uh, briefly mentioned, but I'm not really understand that how the uh, uh, these nanoparticles can actually uh, be used to uh, to uh, uh, re re reduce the ROS. Yeah, is it the this nanoparticle? What is what this this the nanoparticle do to uh, to to the ROS? Oh, sorry, I cannot catch. Yeah, you 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 mentioned about the reactive oxygen species yes. in your slide. Yeah. Yeah. So, what is the uh this uh titanium dioxide do yeah. to the this ROS? Yeah. What is the mechanism? Oh. Can you a little bit uh. I really want, yeah. This is a mechanism, titanium dioxide. Yeah, the mechanism. The, the previous slide you mentioned about ROS. Uh, ROS? Re reactive oxygen species, I think. Ah. Mm. This is just showing. Yes. Me. Yes. But titanium dioxide do not make single oxygen and hydrogen peroxide. They you just produce superoxide. Yeah? Anion and hydrogen radical. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because they just produce electrons, free electrons, and holes, and they take electrons from OH minus, and they make hydrogen radical. And mm -hmm. this electron, once attached to oxygen, they become superoxide anions. Mm, oh, so I see. Titanium dioxide produces superoxide anion and hydrogen radical in the air condition. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, do you mean, Sensei, uh, TeO2, uh, if they are at, uh, attached by O2, uh, they, they will become a radical? And they will become superoxide anion? Yes. Like that, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. Thank, thank you, you very much for your uh, thank you for your answering question. my questions. I'm really super new in this uh, nanotechnology, so really, really appreciate your uh, uh, your answer to my question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Then before we, uh, I have a seven, uh, my, my students uh, chat me by WhatsApp because yeah. they say that they are shy to ask you directly. Uh, they, don't they become say that, shy. Uh, <laughs> don't become shy. Uh, sensei, before uh, I uh, back to the question and answer, I, I would like to say hello to Rionia and Pampang. Uh, already come to our uh, lecture series too. Hi, Niwa Sang. Ohayo gozaimasu. Hi, Pampang. Pampang is here? Yes, Pampang is here too. Hi, Niwa. Can you on your camera? Hi. Hi, Niwa. Niwa. 
There is uh, Niwa and Pampang too. Where is Pampang? Pampang. Oh, here. Yes. Panyapon Pum Kaoi. Pampang, where you are? <laughs> Pampang. Right now, Pampang is very busy with uh, writing manuscript. Last time he called me in the so night. He, he had a job? Yes, he has. Where he is? <laughs> Hello. Hi, Pam Bang. So, are you working in laboratory right now? Yes. Where? In research center, Sensei. In Bangkok? Bangkok? Yeah, uh, in Batum Chani, Sensei. Oh, Pam Bang is here. Yeah. And there is a you sang too, and you are sang. Actually, I invite uh, Hasegawa and Moriyama too. Maybe uh, they couldn't join uh, because they yeah. have another activity. Okay, Sensei. Uh, my uh, my student asked uh, this uh, uh, some question with uh, uh, Doctor Fabri question. TeO two uh, they can protect yeast from UV. Uh, can we apply uh, TeO2 in our daily life product, uh, like, uh, uh, like uh, for example, uh, uh, t-shirt or like uh, our umbrella or our uh, bag or something like that? Uh, is it uh, will it give a side effect after a long time uh, using something mm. like that? Sorry, it is not easy to apply. Mm. But uh, we already use titanium dioxide for sunscreen. You oh. didn't use? Yeah, I use it. Yeah, Is it yeah. uh, give a uh, side effect after long time use? Anyway, what I can tell you is sunscreen is not dangerous. Oh, okay. Some people say sunscreen is titanium. So they produce loss. Mm. But if you use sunscreen with polyethylene glycol, mm -hmm. then just reductive conditions. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, another one, Sensei, from my student. Is it uh, the laboratory, uh, if we are working with nanotechnology or nanoparticle, you, you say, uh, you mentioned before that uh, green and black nanoparticle are uh, relative danger. Is it, uh, we need a special uh, or a specific place or a specific laboratory to work uh, green or black nanoparticle? Mm. Like, uh, for example, like a virus, a COVID virus, they have a specific or a special laboratory, uh, BSL3. How about nanoparticle, like a green or a black nanoparticle? AIST. Mm -hmm. You mean the Uriyama working place? Oh, Uriyama working. About uh, nanomaterials. Mm -hmm. But in Gifu oh. University, no control. Oh. Okay, okay. So you should have a control, Sensei. Yeah. Oh. Well, I don't know. Yeah, but anyway, dust or particle is dangerous to mm. our body. Mm. Not only nanoparticle, fine mm. particle is also dangerous. Mm. So in any cases, we have to care. Yeah, yeah. About the dust or particle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, and uh, next question from my student. Uh, how dangerous the black nanoparticle in our cell? Why you say it uh, danger because of the crystal? What will happen in our cell or something? Uh, I deny the theory of crystal structure. Hmm. Please forget crystal structure. But solubility. Oh, so ion okay. is more important. Oh, okay, okay. So many scientists believe that crystal is important. Mm. I don't believe that. I think solubility is more important. Okay, okay. 
Yes. Thank you, Sensei. Uh, this is a, a little funny question from... Uh, I, I get a question. Uh, because not, uh, like a TEO2, they can produce uh, uh, rose or... Uh, can we make a nano? Uh, nan, uh, is it possible if there is uh, like a, how can I say that? Uh, like nanotechnology weapon with this material. Like, so, um, I cannot catch. Yeah. So uh, actually, uh, there is a, some rumor uh, uh, like a biological weapon. So we, uh, how can I say that? I will say in Japanese. You can say Japanese. Buki. Hmm? Buki. Buki. Buki or. Buki. Yeah, hi. Weapon. Yeah. Nan particle. Yes. Is it possible? Nama nama no nama nama mo ne heiki. Huh? Buki. Weapon. How can you say that? In Japanese. Sorry. I have no, no idea about that. But. Is sometimes metal ion, metal particle become dangerous. If you spread, for example, cadmium, cadmium particle, nanoparticle, if you spread in the field, mm -hmm. we Is have it? a big problem. Oh, okay. So it's possible, right, Sensei? In Japanese, uh, like this, nama nama mono he kiosuru sukuru koto wa kono desu ka? Like nama mono he kiosuru koto wa kano desu ka? He kiosukuru koto wa kano desu ka? Yeah, hi. Is it possible, Sensei? Maybe yeah. Rio help this one. It is, um, but probably not, um, not nanoparticle specific. You mm -hmm. just spread the chemical. Oh, okay, okay. So it's mean a uh, chemical weapon. Yeah. So it's very dangerous. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sensei, for uh, you said um, uh, before that you already make a ISO. Hi. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, can we download that ISO if we want to working with nanomolecule toxicity? City. Can we can we download uh for free? Can we download for free the ISO if we want to work with nanomaterial toxicity? I cannot catch if you if we can we download don't go yeah don't download but download hi download yes it is possible yeah, yeah. is, is you it just for paid free? you just paid a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> so is it for free sensei or we should pay for that or to you have to pay for ISO Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I see, I see. I also paid. Oh, okay. okay. ISO to download my ISO. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sensei. And there is a two question left. Is it uh my my student have a question? If you have a question, you can raise your hand. I think I want to ask another question, uh, Professor. Yeah. Uh, how uh, how expensive is the nanomaterials? 
Is it expensive? And the material? Yes. It depends on the materials. Mm. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the titanium dioxide, for example. I mean, it's is that expensive to produce yeah, and to you want, apply? Once I bought titanium dioxide from company, yeah, it cost just, I don't know, less than 100,000 yen. Mm -hmm. 1,000 dollar for one ton. Yeah. For one ton? One ton. 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 That's, that's huge. That's a kilogram. So yeah. I asked smaller plant. So they give me freely. Mm. So I think for industrial use, that is not so expensive, except gold and silver, uh, platinum. Mm. I want to buy gold nanoparticle by budget. Mm. <laughs> to accumulate <laughs> gold. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. Sensei, there is a question from Ine, Ineke. Ineke tadi raise hand ya. Iya bu. Boleh Ineke. Boleh. First of all, I want to take a, I want to thank Dr. Yolani, Dr. Febri, and Dr. Fratu that facilitate that have facilitate this seminar. And I also want to thank uh, Professor Iwahashi that uh, has given us like the new topic about nanomaterial. Actually, it is. Uh, kind of like new to me about nanomaterial. I haven't have a big chance to um, study about that. So it, uh, I really appreciate uh, your lecture. Uh, my question uh, is, I, I think it's a uh, pretty simple. I just want to know from your perspective, like uh, what is the most promising aspect or object about nanomaterial to be working with maybe in next year, like 2023, or like what is the most promising topics of research about the material that uh, we can work with in 2023 or like uh, next year? Thank you. So, sorry, I cannot catch. Uh, uh, I mean, because of the sound is not good. Oh, uh, sorry. You I mean, sound, would you? Yeah. I mean, what is the most promising aspect or object about nanomaterial to be working in the next year or like in 2023? Oh, uh, do you, you mean, understand? Yeah. Do you mean which, uh, I mean, uh, which, uh, what, what kind of the next uh, project, next maybe? Project. Yeah. For next year, the most interesting things, if you want to study about nanotechnology or nanomaterial, which oh. one the, the the most uh the most uh, interesting yeah, yeah, for next project? No, uh, like the promising. Yeah, indeed, I have no idea, and uh, I don't think we have the future of nanomaterial. <laughs> Why, Sensei? I think That's, that for a drug delivery yeah, in, maybe... in biology field. Mm -hmm. But in machinery or factories, that is very useful. And for example, for protecting some microbes, we can use silver nanoparticle. And the most uh, hottest field of nanomaterial is nanocellulose. Moriyama is studying. Oh, Moriyama. Big budget. Oh, okay, okay. And next will be microplastic. So many people believe that microplastic is dangerous to our body. You know, microplastic. Yes, we know. That's why I put Oh, sorry. Up here, contamination. Microplastic is toxicity. 
because of contamination of chemicals or microbes or some dust. So many scientists focus on microplastic and they say this is dangerous, but indeed, just because of contamination. That's why we put this contamination section here to prevent such bad scientists. So next focus will be microplastic and nanocellulose. Mm. But in the biological field, but some machinery field or other field, there are so many nanomaterials which is usable. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the answer. Okay. Uh, sensei, I still get a question from yes. my uh, student. Uh, uh, related with Ineke uh, question. So, uh, Sensei, what is the benefit of nanotechnology? Uh, I mean, if, if we work with this, what is the benefit? So, we have many. For example, NGS, next generation sequencer. Yes. That is also nanotechnology. Mm. But nanomedicine, so far useless. Why? Because they didn't study well about the characterization of oh. nanotechnology. Mm. They just export to cell. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so we okay. have many nanotechnologies in mm. industry, mm. but there are not so many nanotechnology in biology, biological mm. field. But mm. NGS is a nanotechnology. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Related with that question, how dangerous that nanotoxicity in our body? Indeed. How much the level danger? Is it a very, very harmful or? Uh... If you understand what is a chemical, hmm? it depends on the chemical. Oh, okay. okay. Material itself, itself has no toxicity. Hmm. But some nanoparticle maybe contains impurities. Hmm? Or, uh, for example, cadmium nanoparticle. Hmm. Cadmium itself dangerous, mm. but silver nanoparticle or mm, no silver particle has no problem for us. Okay, but okay. But so it's depend on the material. Gold. I welcome gold nanoparticle. Mm. Oh, for making yeah. money. <laughs> 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 not not for uh, nanotechnology and biotechnology. Okay, uh, so I uh, I get conclusion for your uh, uh, I get conclusion for your uh, uh, today's uh, uh, lectures that uh, the nanoparticle or nanotechnology uh, uh, they have the the, the dangers of the. Uh, the dangers of the material, uh, they are totally different in our body. And uh, uh, for, how can I say that? Uh, so so we, we have a, a standard to working with nanoparticle with uh, with this material. So is it a uh, student have uh, another question? Kak Febri masih ada pertanyaan? Uh, yeah, I don't have any more question. Yeah, thank you very thank much. You. Yeah. Gimana kita? Yeah, tutup aja kalau ini ada. Thank you very much, Sensei, to give thank your you. uh, lectures to uh, Universitas Pajajaran. We really appreciate it, and uh, we hope that uh, next time we can 
have a collaboration or uh, next uh, lectures uh, more. Yeah. Uh, so actually, the person that conduct uh, this uh, guest lecture is uh, Dr. Febri Doni. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome, Professor. And yeah. I hope we can invite you again in the future. Yeah. yeah. And uh, most thankful thing is we could see many students. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should. Yeah. <laughs> So actually, I invite uh, our uh, uh, sensei's laboratory, uh, sensei laboratory student member like Pam Pang, Jiang Le, and uh, Niwa Sang, uh, Yu Sang, uh, you, uh, Hasegawa, Moriyama, and another to join yeah, with yeah, yeah. lecture. So actually, I want to, uh, how can I say that? Uh, um, meet again or make a collaboration together yeah maybe about research or something else. Yeah. yeah. Next time with Jan Lei. <laughs> with Jan Lei, yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, Sensei, is it possible if we visit your laboratory in the next future? I visit? Visit your laboratory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. But until next year. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'll be so retired. Be retired. Okay, mm. okay. Thank you very much, Sensei. Yeah, Thank, you very much. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, uh, uh, Pa Febri, Prof. Ratu. Thank you for everyone that's come to this uh, guest lecture series. And uh, I think that uh, today, uh, today's meeting already uh, enough to uh, to co to conclude. I mean, uh, to finish this uh, this uh, section. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Professor. <laughs> thank you, Sensei. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah. So bye bye, everyone. Yeah.